we're going to show a finishing schedule in which only aerosols are used to create the entire finish. Apply a coat of vinyl sealer to all the surfaces that will be finished. Use overlapping strokes to be sure of even coverage. Start with the sides. Next, seal the back. Then seal the soundboard, or you might refer to it as the top of the body. Allow the sealer to dry for 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the thickness of the application and the temperature and humidity at the time of application. Scuff sand the sealer, or in other words, sand lightly with silicon carbide stearate P320B sandpaper so as not to break through the sealer. We'll show the beginning of the masking. Of course, it must be done for the full circumference of the back. Next, the black trim must be masked as well. As stated earlier, the goal is to make the sides dark brown. Notice that the unmasked soundboard is face down while spraying color on the sides. We'll use an Encore Brown Guitar Toner Aerosol to apply the color. Guitar Toner Aerosols contain instrument lacquer that has a dye added to apply color. Add the toner slowly until the desired depth of color is achieved. It's always easier to add color than to take it away. Allow the toner to dry for one half hour. We've chosen to make the neck the same color as the sides. Therefore, it's necessary to apply Encore Brown Toner here as well. However, we don't want the head of the guitar to have any more color, so we masked it as you can see. Again, add color slowly so you don't go past the target and get it too dark. Allow it to dry at least one half hour. Next, we'll apply color to the back of the body. We begin by removing the masking that we applied before spraying color on the sides. We've decided to add a bit of color with StarCast Amber Guitar Toner evenly over the whole back. StarCast Amber is a much lighter color than Encore Brown. It has a reddish cast which you'll notice if you spray it heavily. Apply an even light coat over the surface to add a little color. It doesn't have to be a wet coat. We're only adding color. We're not building the finish. Dry one hour. The back is now ready for the sunburst effect. Remember that we cut a piece of poster board to serve as a template for applying the sunburst. The template should be positioned about two inches above the surface of the guitar. We're inserting two inch screws into the cardboard. Screws will be placed where each X is drawn. The template is then placed screws down on the guitar. This is the reason we allowed the toner to dry for at least an hour. We don't want the points of the screws to easily damage the toner. The screws hold it two inches over the surface, exposing two inches around the edge for applying the sunburst. The purpose of the template is to keep the width of the sunburst equal all the way around the perimeter, and to keep the center of the guitar clean of the darker color. Since the cardboard is not directly on the surface, the line made by the toner will be a gradual change of color. We're going to use Encore Brown Toner, which is the same one we used on the sides and neck.
Aim the spray outward over the edge of the cardboard until you've added as much color as you desire. Notice that the can is about 8 to 10 inches from the guitar. If you want a lighter sunburst, keep the can at about 16 inches and add color slowly. After the dark edge is complete, remove the cardboard. For another effect, the StarCast Amber can be sprayed over the dark edge and in toward the center by about 2 inches or so. Spraying the StarCast Amber heavily will give the sunburst a reddish edge. Allow the sunburst to dry for one half hour. As with our other applications, the goal is to apply an even coat. Since both sides will have to be sprayed, the neck can be hung on a swinging arm. These coats of stringed instrument lacquer should be even, wet, overlapped strokes. Dry one hour before applying the next coat. Begin application of stringed instrument lacquer on the body of the guitar. Start with the sides. As always, apply the lacquer in even, wet, overlapping strokes. Spray all the way around the sides. Then apply lacquer to the back and the soundboard. Here we're spraying the soundboard. Start near yourself spraying parallel and overlapping wet lines of finish. The overspray being generated at the far end of the soundboard will be covered with a wet coat as you progress across the surface. Be careful not to let the bottom of the can touch the guitar. The same technique is used on the back. Continue adding more coats of lacquer to the entire surface. Repeat the application of stringed instrument lacquer until there are about 10 coats of finish. The number of applications will depend on the thickness of the coats. We apply heavy coats on the soundboard and back of the body, making sure the surface stays horizontal until it's dry enough not to develop runs. After a week of drying, it's time to begin the rubbing process. To achieve the high gloss finish that we want, it will be necessary to sand the lacquer with a lubricant using several grits of progressively finer sandpaper. The purpose of the remaining progressively finer grits will be to take away scratches left by the previous grits as the surface becomes increasingly smooth. We've begun the process of moving to smoother sandpaper on the soundboard. As you can see, the process is the same. Make sure you include the entire surface on each step. Now we'll start the process of sanding the neck. We will not use a sanding block in this case. After sanding, we'll use rubbing compounds to take the finish the rest of the way to a high gloss. Begin applying it with a soft cloth balled up in the palm of your hand, spreading it over the surface to be rubbed. It's better to rub in the small areas than rubbing the whole side, back, or soundboard at once. After spreading, rub in a circular motion and then with the grain. Buff the excess compound away with a clean cloth. Here is the final result of rubbing. As you can see, the finish is a very high gloss. After rubbing the neck, the fretboard must be coated. Do not use lacquer or other high build finishes. Use a product made specifically for fingerboards. We'll use fingerboard oil. Fingerboard oil is ideal for preserving the feel and appearance of woods, such as rosewood, ebony, and similar woods used on stringed instrument fingerboards. It penetrates unfinished wood and dries hard. As the original application wears, it can easily be repaired with additional applications of the oil. Apply so the surface of the fretboard is wetted. A 
Allow 30 minutes. Buff surface with a dry cloth. If the sheen is dull or uneven, reapply fingerboard oil. Allow 24 hours. Hours is okay. After another 24 hours, buff with 4 alt steel wool and wool loop. Finally, put the guitar together and admire your work. The guitar is ready to have the hardware and strings attached. I've got a question for you. On Saturday we were playing and I noticed that I had my guitar in tune but the low E string kept popping in and out while we were playing and strumming. So taking a look at it, I noticed that the nut was busted on top. I found something that said baking soda and super glue can repair a nut. I'm not sure about that. What can you tell me about it? Before I get into whether or not I can help Lou with a nut on this guitar, here's a little background on baking soda and super glue. It's the baking soda super glue trick. Mix the two together and you get something hard as a rock. This is regular old household baking soda. And you hit that with a drop of water thin super glue. And go off and let it rest for a minute or two and come back and check it out. I gave this about a minute. And it chips like glass. What I use this for is when the nut slot's worn too deep or been cut too deep as at least a temporary fix to get the guitar out the door. I'll show you how I do it. For my demonstration, I'm using an old Washburn guitar from the 1920s. And it's got a lot of troubles with the nut. It's an ivory nut and the strings have worn way too low over the years. Maybe somebody recut them. And the first string is laying on the fret. I'm just going to move a couple of strings out of the way and only work on the treble E string slot. Check out the string, it's tied together in a knot to get the most mileage out of that string. I cleaned it up with acetone, get all that grease and dirt out, and now I'm using probably a 40 thousandths nut slotting file, rolling it back and forth to get in a new material and get rid of that dirt. I want to get down to clean ivory or clean bone so my glue will stick. That's more acetone and a little bit more filing until it gets clean. If it's not clean, it won't stick. I like this little tip of sliding something under the strings to pull my tape in place. Here I'm using my glue spatula, which is good for putting dust into the slot and packing it down. For dust, I'm going to use a nut that I took out of the drawer. That's an old nut off some other guitar. It's bone, not ivory, and it's the perfect color because it's kind of yellowed. So I'm filing off bone dust in the area till I get a little pile of it using the smooth side of a file. I want the dust to be small and powdery, almost like the baking soda. I get rid of the excess so it won't stick to the tape because that super glue is really thin. It could run down onto it and glue the whole thing together. I'll start off the edge and let the glue run into the slot. Now I'm packing in more dust and another shot. That took me two times to fill it. And it hardens almost as fast as the baking soda. Something about bone and ivory and super glue. It reacts real quick. Now I'm just going to reshape it a bit, get it smooth. It's all filled and I can cut the slot for the string. Hopefully I can save that original E string. It's vintage. Make a little impression in the material from the string and follow that with a sharp feather file. And I use a razor saw, a little, I think that's probably a 10,000 gauge precision saw to cut that slot. rid of some of the filing marks with a little 320 grit paper and I should be back in business. That's how fast you can fill a nut slot.
with bone dust and super glue or baking soda. Ta-da! As for Lou's guitar, we'll have to see because it's a plastic nut for one thing, and it seems to be sitting on another plastic nut or a big shelf of plastic. It's been shimmed up. Baking soda will fill plastic, but not every plastic. But it's not going to work on a corner. That's too weak. It probably got cracked at some point, and that's why it chipped off. And if you tune that string up, it's going to shear off whatever I put on there. This is a case where I go to the drawer and get out a pre-made nut, this tusk one looks like a perfect fit, and we'll find out by knocking out the old one and seeing. This is great. It slides in as tight as I could ever fit it by hand. I don't even need a file or a chisel. It's getting tight right there. Like sliding in a drawer. I'll put on the two outside E-strings, and if they're right, it's going to work. That doesn't even need a shim. That's the amazing thing. It does not need a baking soda fix if you can change the nut that quick.